All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche forward Alex Newhook, Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. Hey, Alex, can you take me through that uh, first goal of your career? Yeah, um, from what I remember, um, comp threw it off the pad, uh, popped out to me in the slot, and, um, you know, I saw a lot of net. I was hoping I could put it in, and, um, you know, I know a big point in the game, so I was happy to put that home and, and uh, give us, I think, a two-goal lead there. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Alex, I was wondering, for one, have you finished your college classes and are you kind of all focused on the playoffs now? And then two, did anyone say anything on the bench that stuck out to you after that goal? Like, congratulating it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm done classes now. It's nice to be able to just focus on hockey. Um, it's been a long time, but it's nice that it's, you know, just hockey now, I think back to like the junior days. So uh, that's nice. And um, yeah, everyone, everyone's coming up to me and congratulating me. It was a pretty cool feeling. Um, like one probably playing with belly. He was, uh, he told me that I wish that someone had him on video for his celebration on the bench. So I don't know if someone got that, but I'm sure it was uh, pretty good. Ron Knabenbauer, avalanche.com. How, uh, what was going through your mind when you were thinking, just trying to not miss there and what was just your overall thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely trying not to miss. Um, like I said, a lot of net. Um, you know, it was a great play by Comp, throw it, throw it off the pad there. Um, yeah, I was just, you know, hoping I could put it in. Luckily went in and uh, here we are. We'll take two more here for Alex. Brandon Crystal, KOA. Yeah, Alex, I guess uh, after you score the first one, it's got to be going through your head. How do I get more of these? So how do you, I guess, <laughs> make it a, a regular occurrence and not such a special occasion? Yeah, um, you know, I think I think after the goal, it's great to you know take it all in, and I try my best to do that. And um, you know, as soon as the whistle goes, it's it's focused on the next shift. Um, you know, big big model for us is um, to just put you know whatever happens one shift behind us, look forward to the next one. And um, that was my mindset there. Uh, you know, try try my best to create some of the next shift and um, just play my game. And last one here, Ryan O'Halloran, in Denver Post. Hey Alex, during the course of a playoff run, how important are games like tonight where the big guns don't score, but you get you get one, Graves gets one, Saad gets one, et cetera? Yeah, I think it's um, you know a strong point in our team. You know we got a lot of depth. Um, you know I think guys can score in, in any position and on any line. Um, you know obviously our top line does a lot of producing, and um, you know there's going to be nights where where they don't get the same looks as as uh, you know as as every night. So um, it's up to us to to step up. Um, different guys every night, and I think that's a that's a big strength of our team. All right, thank you, Alex. Thank you. We'll take questions for Avalanche forward Brandon Saad, Peter Baugh, the Athletic. Hey, Brandon, just what did you see on on the goal that you scored, and then just how key was your guys' depth scoring tonight? Without I top line didn't score a goal, and Kale didn't score a goal, and you guys all came through. Yeah, that's a that's a big part of playoffs. You know, having the the deep team that we have any given night, we can have goal scorers. So um, it can't be the top line every night. And I think we did a good job of chipping in tonight. Uh, as for my goal, Berkey just had good speed down the wall. Uh, just try to drive and uh, get open. He made a great pass and I just had patience with it and, and put it on the back end. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Brandon, Nazem Kadri's suspension came through during that game. Number one, uh, did you guys hear about it during the intermission? And if not, when did you guys hear about it? And number two, have you ever seen a suspension come through like that in the middle of a game? No, I didn't hear about it uh, during the game. Um, afterwards, I think uh, just word gets out quickly. So uh, I heard about it there afterwards. Um, obviously, it's tough news to hear. He's a big part of our team. Uh, it's a lot of games. So uh there's not much you can really say. I mean, it's tough news for our team. We're going to have to soldier on next man up mentality and win some games without him. Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. Ryan, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Sorry, Brandon. Uh, game one to game two to game three for you after missing some time. How do you feel you're, you're returning the form? Yeah, I think uh, getting better as it goes along here. You know, it's tough to miss some time. Uh, and then hop right into it. Not only that, but you're in the playoffs. But uh, I think timing, things like that are all coming back. Feel more confident with the puck and making plays. I think it's getting better every game. So I'm pretty happy so far. We'll take two more here for Brandon. Ron Knabenbauer, avalanche.com. Brandon, the fourth one in a playoff series is always the toughest one to win. What's key for this group to get over that hump and win that fourth one and move on? 
Well, I think we've done a good job of just taking it day by day, game by game, regardless of the situation we're in. So uh, obviously we know we're going to get their best next game because it's do or die for them. But for us, it's just playing a good team game and sticking to what makes us successful. And last one here, Michael Morial, NHL.com. Hey, Brandon, how important was it to, to, to weather, weather the early storm there by the Blues in the first, you know, in front of their fans, you settled down and, and played your game? Yeah, we knew they were going to come out hard, uh, obviously down 2-0 back in their building. So um, it's just all part of hockey. You know, it's momentum swings. We knew they were going to have that push. I think we did a good job of sticking with it and coming up with some big plays there and goals in the second. All right. Thank you, Brendan. We'll take questions for Avalanche defenseman Ryan Graves. Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. Hey, Ryan, uh, can you take me through the, your goal coming out of the penalty box and whether to be aggressive there or not? Um, I mean, usually coming out of the box, especially as a defenseman, I'm just kind of thinking, uh, coming back into the play, and I'm going to be uh, try to be F3 down low, um, try to break the puck out and then change for a forward. But um, I don't know how it squeaked out, but it kind of squeaked out to a, a really good spot for me. And um, Fortunately, it was kind of the second period, and it, um, so I had to jump on their guy, and it popped out. And then, um, I mean, that's kind of the stuff that you're in the box. You're thinking about. And you're just you're dreaming that it's going to come out. It's wishful thinking that it's going to come out that way. But uh, it's nice. So uh, it's a big goal for us, and uh, I'm just happy that I could be able to to finish it, get us an early lead to kind of get us rolling. And um, it, it was a big goal for us, so I'm happy to be able to chip in when I can. Peter Baugh, the Athletic. Yeah, Ryan. I think you also had the assist on new hooks first goal um i guess what were you trying to do there how excited were you for him and yeah just can you walk me through that yeah first of all very excited for him i mean that's an awesome feeling for him uh, i know how excited i was for my first uh, so your first uh, congrats to him it's awesome um for on the play i was just kind of trying to get it to the net it popped out i was just trying to get it on net um get a playable puck there um, and then took a nice bounce off the goalie's pad right to him so uh, it's good another big goal for us Kate Shefty, The Gazette. First of all, happy birthday. And second, where does this rank on, on your list of recent birthdays? Pretty good? Yeah, pretty good. I don't remember the last time I've had a hockey game on my birthday. Um, I mean, last year we were in quarantine, so it's a lot better than that one for sure. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Yeah, Ryan, I was just going to ask you about your birthday and having three points as a defensive defenseman, obviously three points. <laughs> It is a really good birthday for you, eh? Uh, I mean, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, my game, it's, like you said, defense first, uh, penalty kill, just trying to shut down top lines. It's points are kind of a secondary thing for me, but um, obviously when you can chip in when you can and kind of help the team out is, is huge. So um, fortunate bounces on a couple of them. Um, so it just, again, just um, for, fortunate bounce out of the box. Um, second one, just trying to get a playable puck to the net and then Nui finishes it off. So, um, I mean, my game's still the same. I'm trying to play good D and um, trying to be reliable and tough to play against. Uh, I'm definitely not um, changing my game or, or, or changing my mindset to try to be offensive. Um, it's just kind of um, lucky bounces in a sense tonight, but uh, definitely not changing my mindset or my game. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Ryan, you guys went into that second period scoreless and the Blues had 17 shots, yet you guys came out with a three to one lead. Uh, do you feel like Philip Grubauer is kind of being overshadowed by just how many goals you guys are scoring and how well he's been playing? I mean, it's been the story of our year. He's played really well all year. Um, I mean, he's been our best player a lot of nights. Uh, I mean, there's nights that, that Nate takes over or Miko takes over for us. But uh, I mean, there's a, a lot of nights that Gruby is, is really good and you just don't even notice that that he's been so good in there that he just makes saves look effortless. So um, time and time again, he, he, he bails us out when we make mistakes. So uh, there was times in the game where they were kind of um, uh, getting some chances and taking it to us a little bit. And he really held, the, held it down for us and um, allowed us to keep our lead. And um, in the end of the day, get us to win. We'll take two more here for Ryan. Michael Morial, NHL.com. Hey, Ryan. Um... Was there any motivation at all after O'Reilly predicted prior to this series that, that they were going to, to have fun and win the series? I mean, definitely. But at the same time, what do you want him to say? You want him to say they're, they're going to lose. I mean, we're, we're going in the same thinking the same thing that we're going to win. So, um, I mean, we're going in that we're going to, we're going to beat them and, and they're going in thinking they're going to beat us. So um, we definitely um, it's been a, it's been a heated series. It's been physical. It's been, 
it's been fun on both sides. Honestly, um, the games have been close. Um, they've, they've played good hockey um, and we've, um, it's been a good test for us. So, I um, mean, it's, it's far from over and we have um, some improvements in our game we can still make. And um, we, we're just trying to get that last one. And we know it's going to be really tough to get. Last one here, Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Ryan, I guess two things. One was Santini and just wishing you a happy birthday there at the end. And then two, um, how important will depth scoring be on this run with, with you guys didn't have, like you said, McKinnon, any of those guys scored tonight and still scored five goals? Yeah, depth scoring will be huge. Um, I mean, we, we've, we feel like that's been a big thing throughout our lineup all year. We've had injuries um, throughout the past two seasons where guys have just, uh, I mean, guys like Berkey and, and Kampf and, and Josty and Sauter and the list goes on and on. Val of guys who just stepped up. Donnie and um, so many guys that I'm missing in there that have just stepped up time and time again with injuries, um, with Nate missing games and Miko missing so many games last year and, and Landy missing games. So uh, we, we really do believe in that next man up, next man up mentality. So, uh, I mean, our depth scoring has been, it's been huge for us. We're not trying to lean on just one line. We want to have everybody pitching in and um, it's, it's what a, it's a big part of our success in our game plan. All right. Thank you, Ryan. We'll take questions for Avalanche head coach Jared Bednar, Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Jared, what was just your overall reflection on, on tonight's performance and especially the depth scoring you got from your guys? Uh, I thought that, you know what, I liked their start. Um, I didn't love our second period again. Uh, really liked the way we checked in the third, more disciplined with the puck more purposeful with the puck, just guys doing the right thing all over the ice. So I think we were a little opportunistic tonight. Uh, we we had some good opportunities to, to score some goals, but we didn't execute that well at times. And um, same thing with our breakouts and in the neutral zone. And then at times it was really good and um, just a little bit inconsistent. I think St. Louis definitely had something to do with that. They played hard tonight. They were more physical. Um, but we had some guys that, that capitalized on their chances. And, and like you said, we got the depth scoring. So penalty kill was really good. Power play, not so much. Um, you know, a lot, a lot to like and, and, and then some that I'm still not really happy with. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. I know you said, you know, throughout the series that discipline is going to be a huge thing for your team. Just what did you think about staying disciplined when, you know, the Blues are trying to hit everything, everything that was skating on the ice? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I liked our discipline tonight, you know, probably with the exception of Landy's penalty at the end. Um, you know, I felt comfortable that, that we were going to get the job done. I just, you know, you get put them on a six on four and you got guys like Hoffman and Preco blasting one timers and, and slap shots and you got guys blocking shots. And I think it, it puts you in a, in a position where guys have to sacrifice and I, I just don't want to see anyone get hurt in those in those situations so I, I didn't love that penalty um, but for for the, the rest of the game I thought we were I thought we were playing hard not as physical as St. Louis but we were on pucks uh, when we were playing well with the exception of probably you know a, a good chunk of the second period so um, just just you know, playing hard, competing hard, but making sure we're staying out of the box. We know they they have a good power play, and, and we don't want to give them op extra opportunities to score goals. Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. Hey, Jared, how, how impressed were you with Grubar specifically in the first two periods? I, I really liked him. I liked him all night. I thought that uh, again, really strong down low. They had some some net driving plays where guys were bringing it to the net. They had some rebound opportunities where we were in battles and they, they established some body position and got some rebounds. Um, he's, he was really strong down low and, and, and anything that came up high on him, I, I think he did a great job with his glove and didn't, didn't give him any rebounds on, on the high shots. So um, good position all night. I, I, thought, I thought he had a really good night for us. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Uh, Coach, can you talk about your decision that led to Confer taking Cadre's role and also uh, your thoughts on the eight games for Nazem? Uh, yeah, well, Confer, I mean, that was a pretty easy one for me. Uh, trying to leave the lineup 
uh, as similar as I possibly can. Uh, he's a guy that's played in that role before. You know, centerman uh, has been playing wing, but just trying to, you know, keep a lot the same. And uh, I feel like some of the other lines have found some chemistry and, and put him in there and see how it goes. And I juggled some things around in the third period with, you know, just trying to identify guys that were going and playing well and some other guys that maybe weren't as good. Um, have some more trust in, 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 in the lines we we're putting out there and, and they did a nice job in the third period. I like their commitment to check from our whole group. Uh, the eight games, I'm a little surprised to, to be honest with you. Uh, I looked through uh, all the headshot suspensions for the last year. A lot of two gamers getting handed out that were, you know, significant hits to the head. We've had some guys put out with hits to the head that, you know, are still out and uh, with no suspension and, and two games. And so I thought, you know, generally the rule of thumb is that the playoffs, you get a little less and he got significantly more. So it is what it is. We have to deal with it and we need other guys to step up and, uh, you know, I'm not going to worry about it past uh, today that, it, you know, we, we live in, uh, we have to live with with the decisions that they make and, and they make them for a reason and we don't always have to agree but it's their decision and, and you got to live with it and uh, he put himself in a bad spot and uh, on the hit and, and and now he has to sit for a while we got we have to have other guys step up in order to win hockey games Peter Baugh, the athletic yeah Jared what did you think of Alex Newhook getting on on the board for the first time in his NHL career and just his performance in general yeah, big goal, huge goal. Does the right thing right away, coming onto the puck out of the D zone, gets a pass, finds some open ice, looks to make a pretty nice play over to Val, and then stays with it and comes to the net on the weak side and gets a rebound. Uh, it's a big goal. I, I, I'm happy for him because I think that you know he can gain some confidence from that. He's been he's been getting a little better every game and and. Uh, you know, you can start to see flashes of his skill and maybe it's not as much in the O zone as is what I would like at times, but um, using his skill just to make plays and clean breakouts, he's good decisions with the puck, been responsible defensively, doing the right thing. So I think, uh, you know, hopefully that gives him a little life here yet and we see a little bit more about, about what, what he's, he's capable of. I'll take three more here for Jared. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Jared, I was going to ask you about the Cadre hit and the suspension. Obviously, it wasn't as egregious as the uh, two hits that he made on the Boston Bruins in the last two playoff series or, you know, a, a while ago before he, ju he joined the Avs. But uh, it just seems like um, maybe the history of this guy caught up with them. Is that part of it? And is that a little bit why that uh, uh, you're not so happy with it? Well, I, uh, the, the reason I'm not happy with it is because they lay out the rules as what's a repeat offender. And it's, in my understanding, it's 18 months. And so you watch the video and they, they talk about it, him being a repeat offender, but he's not. He's been with us for 18 months and he doesn't have any, doesn't have any history. So I don't, I don't necessarily understand it all, but we live with it. And, and I'm not going to talk about it anymore, to be honest with you, because it's just, it's done and over with in my book. It's like a guy getting hurt and missing time. I, I have to worry about the guys that are capable of, of coming in and I got enough decisions to make on the guys that, are, that can come in, that are playing and practicing with us, that are healthy. I can't worry about the guys that are hurt. I can't worry about the guys that are suspended. It's just, you know, you have to focus on uh, the players that you're able to put in the lineup and that can play for you and getting them ready to do the job. So, um, but that's just one part of it that I just didn't really understand. It's, it's talked about in the video and, and he's, not, he's not, a, not a repeat offender by, the, by their definition. So that's what, that's what I don't get. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, the process for suspending Kadri kind of, it took a little bit longer than we've seen in the past. Was there any communication from the NHL or the Department of Player Safety for why it was, you know, it 
took until the game actually started for you guys to know that number one, he's suspended, but just not really knowing how long he's out for. Was that situation communicated to you, Joe, or anybody at all? Yeah. And I, th- I don't know that that was uncommon. Um, they, the, the player gets with the PHPA, I think is the process. The league does their homework. Um, the GM, you know, Joe gets to put in input and, uh, the league gives their side and, and the player gets his side and then they all meet up and, and have the hearing. I, I don't, I don't, I, I couldn't tell you really. We don't see a lot of guys get suspended on our team since I've been here. I think we've been pretty disciplined. So I, I couldn't tell you what the regular length of the process is, but I, I didn't feel it to be, um, you know, overly long. I just thought it was there. Everyone was doing their due, due diligence. Last one here, Michael Morial, NHL.com. Hey, Jared, how important uh, do you feel it is to, to end this series on Sunday, not give the Blues any reason for optimism? Well, it's important. I mean, whenever you have a chance to eliminate a team, it's always the hardest game to win. Um, I think that uh, our guys understand it, that you, you, you try to get out of a series when you have the opportunities to do that. And uh, it's just good habits and playing the right way. We're playing to win every night and uh, we're confident in our team and we'll go out and put our best foot forward and try to get the job done. I think it's, you know, guys understand the importance of the game. It's playoffs. You're trying to win. You're trying to get rest. You're trying to get time to prepare. A lot of things come into it. Uh, so, so we'll come out and you know, give it our shot here uh, a couple of days.